Hey there, welcome to Prog Monster. My name is Murph and I am the host of this show. A show dedicated to progressive rock, hard rock, and other forms of rock music. I know you're probably wondering why it is so funny. Well, I just... Sometimes when I'm making the videos at the beginning, I screw up what I'm saying. Get all tongue-tied and it turns out like a mess and I have to start again. And this particular one was kind of funny though. And now I can't even erase it, it won't let me. So, anyways, here we are. It's Monday night, look back at a classic rock album. Tonight we're doing this album, Super Tramp's Crime in the Century. Fantastic, great album. So, before we get into the vitals about this album and thing, that I just wanna say that um, I know that many Super Tramp fans think this is the the top of the rung album for this group and some people think it's breakfast in america i guess it depends on your opinion right i think breakfast in america was more commercially successful and so a lot more people listen to it and those people like that album whereas this one is more of a super tramp fan i think this one appeals more to the super tramp fan who loved super tramp and followed them from the beginning to way past that the other thing about this is that the argument between this album and super and breakfast in america is almost kind of analogic to um dark side of the moon and the wall because um dark side of the moon is kind of reminiscent of this in a lot of ways there's a lot of it represents Pink Floyd more and this represents Supertramp more where both Breakfast in America and The Wall are very commercial sounding albums that appeal to the masses more so yeah in that way they're very similar um, but to me that's where it ends uh, The Wall is not a good album in my opinion and I know I'm going to take hits for that but I don't really like it Whereas Breakfast in America was the first Super Tramp album I owned and I loved it. And for a long time it was my favorite album. But this one has supplanted it because it's just better. Anyways, enough about that kind of stupidity which doesn't do anything. I digressed from what I'm supposed to be doing here. And sorry, I'm just moving around and that's why the camera is shaking a bit. Okay, so this album, Crime of the Century, was their third studio album. came out in 1974 released on September the 13th. Um, it's about 44 minutes long, which is a little bit long for an album of that time period, but hardly noticeable. Like, I don't notice it at all. Some albums, when they get up to 45 minutes, I notice, like, oh, come on, you know, or there might be a track or two on there you wish they didn't put on and just eating up space on the album. Not so with this one. Uh, the studio was Trident, Ramport Studios, Scorpio Sound in London. Really good place to do their stuff. AM Records was what the label they were on, and they were produced by Ken Scott and Supertramp. Okay, so, sorry about that. I was eating, and I'm having problems keeping it down. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's not a good view. view. Okay, so... The members of Super Tramp on this album, of course, is the classic Super Tramp lineup featuring Rick Davies on vocals, piano, electric piano, Hammond organ synthesizer, and harmonica. That instrument that some people don't like, but it's so tastefully used if you use it right. Uh, Roger Hodgson, vocals, guitar, piano, and electric piano. He's really good on the guitar on this album, I find. Uh, John Anthony Helliwell, who I always want to call Honeywell. I'm not really sure why. Um, he's great, some great sax on here, clarinet, and uh, he does some backing vocals as well. Dougie Thompson on the bass, of course, and then Bob Cyber, Seibenberg, or uh, Bob C. Seibenberg, I think that's the other way they call him drums and percussion of course so that's that's all the technical stuff so that's out of the way I, I like that stuff and i know there's lots of people who do so anyways there are basically eight tracks on the album um four on each side this came out during of course long before the cd was invented and uh earlier on in the 70s um 
side one is like really good like one of the best side ones there is around side two is also almost as good as well this album isn't a masterpiece album for me but it's one of those albums that comes up when i do when i decide on who i'm going to include in my masterpiece albums and i've been doing that for about once a year for for a while now um, it always is one of those on the list short list Last year there was 12 albums on that. Two of them were Super Tramps albums, uh, Breakfast in America and this, and both I decided that the other, the albums I chose, I, I think belong there more. But certainly it's, it's gonna get there sooner or later, and it just keeps getting more memorable all the time. It, it doesn't really suffer a lot of burnout here. I probably listened to it three to 400 times in my life. It doesn't really suffer any kind of burnout that I know of. Um, so it starts off, of course, uh, well, before we get into that, overall, it's a very progressive album with a lot of really good piano parts, some really excellent guitar, some memorable other instrumental parts as well. Um, it has a bit of a bluesy feel to it. Um, it's almost a New Orleans kind of jazzy, I don't think it's a jazz, that, I want to start that again. I don't think it's a very jazzy album, but it has that New Orleans feel to it, at least to me. Um, maybe I'm just hearing things that aren't there, I don't know, but um, great album. I love the cover, it's fantastic. And of course, the guys down there in the corner look good too. I just I just love everything, I absolutely love everything about this album, fantastic album. Um, there's some really catchy um, saxophone on this album as well. I think Honeywell, Honey, Honeywell, there I go. Helliwell really knows how to play that sax, man. He's good. Okay, so the first track on the album is still my favorite track on the album. Has always been my favorite track on the album. And of course, it's played to death on classic rock out stations. Fortunately, I don't listen to classic rock stations, so they don't burn this song out for me, which I love quite a bit. It has a very iconic opening with that harmonica. Maybe one of the best harmonica openings or best harmonica parts in any song anywhere. Love it. Um, it's got some, it's got that kind of screeching guitar that's kind of eerie. And I wouldn't say eerie, it's more like atmospheric, I guess is the best way. It just adds so much atmosphere, it's so catchy. The solo bed is really good. Um, I love the iconic piano solo in the middle. That's so memorable. Hodgin does the lead vocals here, but uh, Davis does some parts vocals partway through the song. He doesn't, like, basically Hodgin does most of it, and he has a little bit that he does as well, which is really good. Um, they have such different voices, too and but both are really good like just um at one time i liked hodgson's voice much better because he sang a lot of the kind of commercial stuff when i was younger and that's what i listened to but over time i've grown to like davies better i just think his voice is just so strong and so good and so memorable and and uh, even though he doesn't have that high pitch range he really really can belt them out. I just think he's so good. Okay, the next uh, track is Bloody Well Right, which he sings. Davy sings this one. Um, some really good piano and a rift on the opening part that I like. Um, the heavy part in this song is like, you know, so catchy. It's just really good. The guitar is just first. It's, it's, it's one of the best guitar bits by Super Tramp on any other albums. Just fantastic. Um, then we get to Hide Yourself Away, which was a track that I, had, I went through a period of time where I loved this track so much. I would just sometimes take the album out and just play this track. I just liked it so much. And uh, Hodgson's vocals are good on it. The piano is so melancholy, but such a good melody. Uh, just fantastic. Um, uh, the backing vocals on this are pretty atmospheric. They add so much to the song. Um, most of the songs that Supertram does, I don't really think of the backing vocals too much, but on this particular track, really good. Um, then you got the last track on side one, which is sung by Davies. 
it's a well-written catchy song um, some really good piano work here as well it's called asylum uh, probably my least favorite track on that side but I like it you know it's not a bad track you know then we get to side two which has the little catchy upbeat kind of radio friendly poppy song dreamer but for a poppy song it's 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 not it's not something that wears on you you know I just I love Dave I love sorry I love Hodgson's voice on this I think it's fantastic the harm the harmonizing is good um, the keyboard opening with Hodgson's vocals is classic you know um, I know yeah like I said it's a bit of a pop song but I love it I think it's better actually live than it is on the studio album but still really catchy real catchy real catchy song sorry I said that too many times must have been a stutter right <laughs> yeah. okay so then the next song is called Ricky um, I don't know why I always think of um, whenever I hear this I always think of that football movie and now I can't remember the name of the football movie but um, I always no, sorry the song isn't Ricky anyways it's Rudy and I don't know why I said Ricky I was off in the clouds there and anyways the songs Rudy it reminds me of the football movie Rudy that's why I couldn't remember it okay so um, the water show the water sh the water they let's try that again the water shore sound and the kind of uh, piano part at the beginning is really memorable really good tastefully done um, it's a bit bluesy some key uh, you know some key um, guitar bits here too as well not not overly strong but like some some solid stuff and uh, of course the uh, the backing vocals are good on this as well um, and Davies is the singer of course I forgot that um, it and then there's the last two tracks which is everyone was listening uh, Hodgson on vocals it's a melancholy song that builds with a catchy melody a good tune a good solid tune for this album and then there's the last song which is crime of the century Davies on piano and vocals here are really good I love that start part of the album. Uh, the piano is a little bit forlong in the middle part, and but is is so good as well. Um, however, the overall feel for the song has never been really one of my favorite tracks on the album. But those parts I like, you know, those parts of the song I, I tend to like parts of this particular album a lot more than other parts. But it, it's it's such a great album. Um, you know, I forgot about how good it was until I was listening to it. And I was kind of, this is my third video of the day because I got to get some in, I get ahead of the game because I don't always get a chance during the week because I'm busy. So I wanted to get this one in today and so it can come out tomorrow night, which will be Monday night. Um, and uh, so I was rushing it a bit, not fast forwarding or anything, but just not, usually when I'm listening to a song, if I'm listening for something I might replay it a few times to get to get what I want down I didn't do any replays tonight I just played it through once and listened to it but you know it's a great album um, highly recommended if, if you're not a super tramp fan or whatever reason you never really follow them this is the place to start right here in my opinion some people would say try breakfast in America I guess it depends on what you're looking for if you're a person that likes those kind of radio hits lots of kind of commercial sound um, <clears throat> catchy melodies and stuff like that breakfast in America might be the better choice but if you like that deeper kind of progressive uh, different sounds and um, you know more uh, less atmospheric but more kind of um, instrumentally sound albums this one might be the better choice so <clears throat> anyways there you have it Super Tramps, Crime of the Century, fantastic album. Uh, I hope you guys love it as much as I do. I hope I didn't bastardize anything too badly here. I tried not to, but uh, as I get closer to the end of the day, I get stupid. Um, can't remember what I'm saying, and my tongue gets tied. Sometimes I say stupid things too, so... <laughs> 
we hardly are we hardly get free of that when we're older anyways i hope you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe um it's much appreciated and we'll be back next week will be a special week because it'll be the hundredth video for this particular episode um uh 100 uh classic rock lookbacks you know uh, just fantastic uh, I, I'm not sure what I'm gonna choose but I'm gonna try to choose something uh, that has had a huge impact on me something that is considered somewhat legendary I've done a lot of those really good albums so I'm not really sure which one I'll pick but I I do have one in mind but it'll depend uh, what my mood is and where I want to go with this so anyways we will see you uh, next monday with the 100th episode so take care and have a good night frog monster saying good night goodbye <laughs>